So here we have a, uh, my first attempt at a watch cleaning machine. Basically stealing other people's equipment and ideas and cobbling it together into something that actually works. <clears throat> so the first thing we've got here is an overhead stirrer from a defunct path lab. Uh, it's a fairly heavy duty piece of equipment. Um, it's got a chuck, standard size chuck here. It came with a variety of uh, stirrers on the end of 8mm stainless steel rods. Uh, I cut off the propeller blades at the end to make these rods instead. These form the attachment point for the Elmer um, frame and basket containing the trays beneath. Um, the top collar of the lid is 8mm internal diameter, which is the same as the external diameter of the, uh, of the rod. There's a grub screw that holds it in position down there. <clears throat> Just here, um, I've got a roller bearing. Uh, this is basically to add some stability. Once this is going above about 400 revs, um, it does tend to shake a little bit. Um, so this gets rid of all of that. So I've got a, a, a bearing, a roller bearing here which has a circular flange on the edge at one end. What I've done is I've actually taken the support arm, which had a, a grabber action on it previously, cut that off, drilled a four mil hole through there, put on a retaining bolt to hold those two into position. So that's held now a perfect line with this, uh, with this rod. Um, so here we've got the Elmer jar complete, which came from Cousins with the lid, the jar and the wave breaker inside. Um, inside of that, you can't see it at the moment, is the, the basket carrier, the three baskets and the, the lid with its 8mm collar at the top to allow attachment onto the steel rod. These two things here are simply uh, items of kitchen equipment, uh, so glass jars which have a sealing lid and I did actually splash out for some wave breakers. Again these are the actual Elmer variety. I assumed that they had researched the, uh, the shape and size of these things so I didn't have to. Um, and in fact overall it works reasonably well. Um, so at the moment I've got the, the basket set up just immersed in washing solution. So this is Elmer WF Pro Wash. Um, I can actually set the, <coughs> the spin speed for this to uh, 420, so I'll do that. Let's knock that down to 420. We'll set it for a minute for demonstration purposes and if I press start it'll gradually ramp up giving a readout of the revs per minute at the top here. It'll ramp up to 420. And I think if, uh, if we try and zoom in a little bit You can see at the bottom there that there isn't too much in the way of uh, foaming at the edges and uh, although there is a, a bit of a vortex, the base of the vortex is still above the top of the lid. Um, you may not be able to see that, so all of the parts inside the baskets will still be fully immersed in the solution. So that's working quite nicely. <coughs> and um, after one minute, uh, the selected time that will then automatically switch itself off. So we'll just wait for that to happen. Should be any second now. Good. Uh, then what we can do is to release the clamp at the bottom top, lift up, so the 
the basket is just clear of the solution. There it is. <clears throat> I can now set the speed up to uh, 1080 is the recommendation that I got from on the website. We'll put that again on for a minute. And again, this is one of the places where that bearing is going to be really quite useful. It'll hold it reasonably steady. So I can get this to spin off. It'll go through its resonant frequency, which is about 500 revs a minute, once it gets above that, it's cranking up now, we're at 1080, so it'll stay at 1080 revs for a minute before then stopping, so we'll wait for that to happen. It's probably gotten rid of the vast majority of the wash solution at this stage. We'll just wait for that to happen. Stop. And what I can do then is to unclamp the bottom again, unclamp the top, raise it up to there, slide the wash solution out. Lid off of there actually fits on that one. So we can put the rinse solution in place. Drop this down. Just there. And we'll change this to uh, 420 revs. Keep it at a minute and off we go. Again, you may or not be able to see it, but the vortex there is just above the lid. There is no froth formation. All the parts in the baskets are fully immersed in the rinse solution. So one of the nice things about this lid, which I hadn't anticipated when I actually bought the jar complete, is that because the inside of this lid is tapered, it actually fits inside the top edge of these kitchen jars and centers it automatically, which is quite nice. So that's, uh, that's good. So simply that, uh, when this is completed, I'll do the 1080 spin-off in the top of this. Because this is a couple of centimeters taller, it's actually much easier to get separation between the bottom of the basket and the top of the fluid. So it's now stopped. Let's come round and do the same thing all over again. So loosen off the bottom clamp, raise up the top, just there. So we're in position then for a spin-off. We'll select the speed up to 1080. Uh, one useful addition to the support uh, mechanism here. On this 15mm solid steel, stainless steel rod, 
that the, uh, the upright here, which the overhead steerer connects to, um, is this stop collar that I've put on. This has a 15mm internal diameter, so the same as the external diameter of the rod. A couple of grub screws either side, just clamped down into position, so that when the, the clamp that holds the overhead steerer in place comes down, um, then the basket resides five millimeters above the bottom of the, uh, the jar that it's in. It doesn't matter whether it's the wash jars or the rinse jars, they're all the same. It keeps it at that consistent position. So it keeps the pattern of the vortex very much the same. <coughs> uh, here we have a picture of the screen on the overhead stirrer. Um, there are various different modes Sadly, none of those are a reversing mode. They're all uh, one direction. So I'll set mode one. Currently it's set for 1080 revolutions per minute. So I'll keep it at that. Set the timer for a minute. Yep. And hit that to go. That will now spin up. I shall see it counting up to uh, 1080 revolutions per minute. Once it's at that level, it will continue for a minute and then it will slow down and stop. Gets past its uh, resonance speed. As it gets higher, smooths out. So it's speed now. Continue for a minute. And then switch itself off. So this is um, it's an AC to DC converter, takes an input of from 120 volts to 240 volts, converts it into 24 volts direct current. Um, it's rated at 8 amps, puts it out through a 2.5 mil barrel jack, center positive, um, very straightforward. In fact, I've tried it already. The motor in this thing is a brushless DC motor, uh, and if you change the um, pin polarities round, so from centre positive to centre negative, then the rotor spins in the opposite direction. So it would be possible, fairly straightforwardly with some control electronics, to convert this into um, a reversing motor, which would be quite good.